What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Stefan here from App Stuff and in today's video, we have a simple but super important topic that I want to cover and it's going to be how we manage content loading state in our applications. So, a super common feature in any application is loading content from an API or a server. And I see developers make mistakes all the time with how to handle the different potential states that that loading state can have right? There's multiple states. We can have a loading state, an error state, an empty state, a completed state, an idle state, all of those different types of things. So we are going to go over the proper and professional way to do that in this video. So let's just go ahead and jump right in. I have a very simple setup here. We have a content view and a content view model. The view model is responsible for fetching some data. And we are adding a two second delay here to simulate this data actually coming back from an API or a server. So here's what our application would currently look like in the completed state, and here's what it would look like when it launches. I'm just gonna reconfigure the uh, preview really quickly. And let's say we wanna load the data. So right now we literally just have a blank screen for two seconds and then the data pops up. So this is like level zero. This is like the ultimate noob developer. They don't add any kind of loading state or anything like that. The screen is simply blank while data is loading and then it just auto magically appears when that process completes. And you can imagine that's a really poor user experience, right? Data could take half a second to load or it could take five seconds to load depending on how your internet connection is or how long it takes the data to load from your API. So the first thing I see people do is introduce an is loading state or uh, property. So we're gonna go here and say is loading is false in our view model. And then in our fetch data function, we're gonna set is loading to true. And then if we succeed or just after this do catch block, we can set is loading to false, right? And then we can configure our UI with this state to show a progress view of things are loading. So very, very simply, I could go ahead and go down to my list and just say, let me cut that and say if uh, view model dot is loading, we're gonna show a progress view, and else we're gonna show our data, right? So this is, you've graduated to level one here. We'll call it Super Saiyan one, right? But we're gonna get all the way up to Super Saiyan God. And this is good because it introduces loading state. So now we are showing the user a progress indicator while our data is loading, pretty basic, right? What happens next if we wanna introduce an error state, right? Things can obviously go wrong. And this is gonna get us to level two or Super Saiyan two, where we are now considering like error handling in our applications. So we can add another property here for an error and make that an optional error type. And we can simply say in, in our catch block, if something goes wrong, instead of printing out the error, we can uh, say self.error is equal to that error. And then down here, this is where things start to get a little messy. We're gonna say if and else if let viewmodel.error. We'll just say text error. Uh, sorry, we can say error equals our viewmodel.error. And we can print out the localized description, right? And then if we were to simulate some sort of error here, we could simply go here and say like throw uh, URL error dot bad URL. We should see some sort of error message come up on our screen. Um, oh, let's go and put this in our do block. Sorry guys. So after two seconds, it's going to throw this error here, right? And this is some error handling that we now have in our app. So that is a good thing. But there are other potential states we could have. Like what if we want an empty state, right? Then we would have to go down here and say like, if viewmodel.data dot is empty, else paste that back in there. And we could say here like text, no data. And then that's our empty state, right? So these are all of the different potential states we could have, and this overall works, but it's pretty messy because we have a lot of different Booleans going along, um, around. 
we have a lot of ills, uh, sorry, ills, if and else, if and else logic, and then we have other nested if else statements here. And overall, this is a very poor structure and it gets very difficult to manage and maintain state and figure out what's going on. And ultimately, what we're gonna wanna do to get to that Super Saiyan God level is to apply an enum here, right? And that's what I like to do when I have multiple potential states that my UI could be in, it's often better to use an enum. And enums apply to a bunch of other different things, but we're gonna be using this for our content loading state in this case. So I'm gonna go ahead and create that now. I use this in all of my apps, uh, from basic examples to production level apps, guys. So we're gonna call this content loading state. And we're gonna have a bunch of different states that our UI could be in here. So we could say case loading, case empty, case error, and case complete, right? And we can also modify this to going forward, which gets us to like Super Saiyan, like what's the next one, man? I can't believe I don't know this. Ultra Instinct, right? For my DBZ heads out there, good for you. We're automatically friends if you like DBZ. And, but this is, this is good for now. So let's go ahead and see how we can implement this, guys. So instead of having these like Boolean properties here and this error property here, what we're gonna do is say var loading state, which is our content loading state. We're gonna start it off at loading. And then here, what we're gonna do is say self.data is equal to blah, blah, blah. That's fine. Let's get rid of this throw statement. But we're pretty much gonna center our UI around this loading state property now. So we need to configure this in our fetch data function. And we're gonna say self dot loading state is equal to data dot is empty, yes, dot empty, no, dot complete, right? So now, instead of here, and like in the catch block, instead of having an error, we can simply say self dot loading state is equal to dot error. And we can now remove this property altogether and remove this property altogether. And we can see here that we're now managing all of this through a single loading state property. And that enum encapsulates all of the different potential states that we could be in. So our view model looks good now, and this is obviously much cleaner already. We don't even have to print that error message out anymore. And now here, we instead of having all this if and else if let and else and if and else and just this endless chain of lo like messy logic in control flow, we're gonna simply do a switch on our view model dot loading state. And we get all the states here and we can configure the views in accordance with that state. So here we have a progress view. Here we have our text for no data. Here we can just say text and error occurred. And here we could just go ahead and paste our list in, right? So look how much cleaner this is. It's much clearer what state or what like sort of view we're going to show in correspondence with a particular state, right? This reading this to me is much, much cleaner and this is much easier to maintain and scale and overall manage the different potential states that our UI could have. So this I consider to be Super Saiyan God, right? But like I said, there is an additional tier here. There's Ultra Instinct that we can still get to. So right now, let's take a look and see what some of the drawbacks of this approach are. Well, we still have to have a data property, right? So here we have to update two things. We have to set our data and we have to configure our loading state. And another drawback that this has is we don't get any information about what our error actually is. What if we need to display that to the user and uh, to let them know what's going on and potentially trigger some sort of retry action or a restart of the app or whatever it may be, right? So we need a little bit more clarity with what's going on with our error handling. And we want to reduce the amount of work we have to do with populating our data. So here's what we can do now, guys. We can pass along some associated values. So for our error state, we're gonna pass along an error that is an associated value with that particular error case. So now I can say self.loading state equals dot error, and it's gonna allow me to now pass in any sort of error type. And we could get into custom error handling here, but we're not gonna worry about that. We're just gonna pass in the error that we get access to as part of this catch block. And now we can read that value 
inside of our content view. And we can say let error. And we can go here and pray, say print error.localized description. So that's really cool, right? Now we get more detailed error handling here. And we can do the same thing with our completed state. So I can add some sort of value. And this would ideally be something that's like decodable, right? So let me just make a struct here. Or let's see, maybe we could just make it equatable or something. So we're gonna imagine that this is always some sort of array of data, right? So we could say data. And for now, we can just make it a string. Ideally, you would make this generic. Uh, we're not gonna get into that now. But basically, guys, what you could do is now say self.loading state equals blah, 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 dot is empty, no dot complete, and pass in the, we could simply say let data now equal that and pass in that data. And now we don't need to have this property on the view model anymore. Everything can be managed through this single loading state property. And now we go here and we could say let data. And now we have access to that data directly inside of this complete state. Just like that. So let's take a look at our app and see if it still works as expected. Boom, progress indicator, and then all of our data shows up here beautifully. So this is the final god tier of how to manage content loading state in your applications, guys. And if you guys want to learn how to build apps at this level of quality and professionalism, make sure you check out our website at appstuff.io. We have a bunch of awesome professional courses on here, guys. Everything from interview prep to help you get ready for a job to the fundamentals all the way from basics to advanced with things like Swift concurrency, intermediate and advanced Swift fundamentals, Swift UI, programming fundamentals. We also have our Pro Plus tier, which is the highest sort of Super Saiyan God tier of the applications we have here at AppStuff. This is everything I've learned in my experience over the past decade as an iOS engineer who has worked at the highest levels at places like Meta. So if you guys are ready for that, go ahead and check out the Pro Plus tier as well. If you have any questions about that, just drop them in the comments or send me an email. And then we have a bunch of awesome pro app clones. So this is an awesome way to get practice building real world applications, completely built with Swift UI from the ground up. We build out backends with Firebase and a bunch of awesome stuff. So make sure you guys check all of that out as well. And if you want access to all of these courses, you can either buy them outright as a one-time purchase, or you can become a member with us here at AppStuff. So for a monthly fee of less than a coffee a day, you can invest in yourself and get access to all of these courses. And we also have an annual membership that allows you to save if you pay yearly upfront. And then our lifetime membership gives you access to everything. That includes all the Pro Plus courses that the monthly membership actually does not include. And it also includes lifetime access to all future content as well. Now, if you guys want the source code for this video, that is available, the link is in the description. For a one-time fee, you can get all of my YouTube source code, past, present, and future. And guys, we have a bunch of awesome videos that have been out on the YouTube channel recently, if you haven't caught those, Vibe Coding with ChatGPT and, and Xcode, MV versus MVVM, the iOS architecture war, new Swift UI features that were launched in w, uh, WWDC 25, a bunch of other awesome stuff, and then, um, I'm recently going pretty heavy on helping people prep for interviews. The job market's crazy right now. It's super competitive. So if you want to learn how to stand out in your iOS interview and get that offer over other people, make sure you check out my interview content. We have courses and we also have free content as well. So if you want to start with some free stuff, there's videos on the YouTube channel that are snippets from the course. And we have a free cheat sheet. The link for that is in the description. You can get the top 20 most interview questions that I've seen in my experience as an iOS developer all for free. And I actually just wrote an ebook as well. That's a 50 page document of all of my interview tips and tricks that you can get for just 29 bucks. The link for that is in the description. And if you guys want to schedule one-on-one -on -one interview calls with me, you can do that as well. The link is in the description to get a free consultation call for that. 
So we can talk for free, we can figure out what you need, and we can go from there. If we decide not to work together, no cost to you, and you get to have some one-on-one -on -one time with me. I'm a pretty cool guy if you guys wanna chat me up. So guys, thanks so much for watching this video. If you just watch me rant about all the stuff I have for sale, appreciate you too. Go buy my stuff. It's worth it, I promise. Um, you know, the testimonials are on the website. I just helped a kid get a job at TikTok. He's making over 200K now. So this stuff is real. It's legit. If you want to take your career to the next level, I'm your guy. Don't bother with any of the other people. I'm just better than them. And I've worked at places they haven't, right? Like I've done the thing and those other guys haven't. Ask any of the other content creators you've learned from if they've worked at Meta. Probably haven't. Just saying. Anyway, thanks for watching this one, guys. Make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. Let me know what you think about this video down in the comments. We'll see you in the next one. Peace.